So the Icky Island expansion actually adds a lot more skins and recolors than I initially anticipated and many of them you get them from some of these uncharted missions or other secret objectives that you can find by randomly exploring. And in this video we're gonna go over a lot more that look really awesome including a brand new look of the Mongol armor skin and also a bunch of brand new helmets that I was able to find. Also a huge shout out to everybody in some of the previous videos comments that were helping out with this so let's Let's jump right into it. Let's get started with Mask of the Eagle that I featured in one of the previous videos when I showcased the Raiders Regalia. I actually got quite a number of questions and a lot of people seem to not get this even though it should be rewarded at the end of the Ikin campaign once you defeat the main villain. Now if that doesn't happen the next thing I recommend is to actually go ahead and reconquer all of these Mongol encampments that are still left. In case you have any of them left with the color red on the map maybe that's the reason why you're not getting it and it should pop in your inventory right away. It's also one of my favorite by the way and it goes really well with that Traveler's Outfit reskin the Raiders Regalia that I showcased in one of the previous videos. But talking about these masks and let's also talk about the headbands, you can actually acquire one right at the start of the expansion and it's called the Petals Caress Headband. As you make your way towards the first quest over there, you will find one of these hills that you can climb on right away. And there you will find this corpse trying to reach out to this box and if you open up the box inside of it, you will get one of your first headbands in the new expansion and it looks something like this. Now there's at least a handful more of these headbands that I will cover in this video and the next three are actually super easy because you get them from some of these really simple haikus. The next one is going to be called the headband of solace. It looks something like this by the way and you unlock this from the waterfall haiku that you find near Kitsune's pond not far away from the starting area right here on this side of the map. Once you complete it you're gonna be able to get this headband that I believe also looks uh, really well. It's one of the best looking in the game. The next one is called the Headband of Regret and it also comes with an eye cover patch so I really like this one as well if you want to go with a more pirate kind of look. You get this by the way from the Wisteria Haiku in the southern part of the island right here on this side of the map. The third one is called the Headband of Acceptance. It's also similar in color with the previous one and you get it from the mountainside Haiku northeast of the island which is going to be right here on this side of the map. But with that out of the way let's also talk about sword kits. There's at least a handful again in the game that you get by various means and the next one is called Tempest End. You actually get this as a reward after finishing all of the memories of my father flashbacks that you find on the map. So there's about five of these locations that you can find around on the map and when you find one of these locations you will have to interact with one of these family banners which will trigger one of these flashbacks from Jin's childhood so you kind of have to do that gameplay sequence there as well. But after you complete all of these there's gonna be a final one onto the northern part of the island which is going to be right here. And the Upon completing it, you will get an achievement as well as the Tempest and Sword Kit. I'm also fairly certain that this is the same kind of sword that Jin's father was using throughout some of these cutscenes but I might be wrong on that one, so totally correct me in the comments down below. Now the next one is going to be called Nekoma's Fang Sword Kit. You get this from one of these pillars of honor that you actually find on the Sarai Island southwest of Iki right here. It's also one of my favorite because it gives you that bright white color scheme, but with some really nice white and red accents and also a golden cat around the handles. I really love this one, not gonna lie, it fits some of the wider versions of the other armors in the game so if you want to rock with something like that then it's probably gonna be the best sword kit for you. The next one is called the stone cutter and you also get this from another pillar of honor this time around in the center part of the Iki Island right here. It's also one of the few swords in the game that changes the handle and it adds a ring to it both to the main sword as well as to the smaller one so it looks kind of nice and by the way some of these strings right here will fit perfectly with one of the armor sets that I will feature towards the end of the video so yeah make sure you stay tuned for that as well. The final sword kit that I will feature in this video is called Mashira's Bite. You acquired this from the Nakajima Shrine all the way up to the south of the island. You acquired this by the way on the way towards the shrine and not at the end of it. It's going to be onto the main road and right 
right next to it you will notice there's this shrine right here and if you interact with it it's going to give you that sword kit this style by the way is very similar to the one that we got from the crimson dye merchant but the colors are a little bit different so if you enjoyed that one but wanted more subdued kind of color schemes then this is probably gonna be the best kit for you also in the same jumping puzzles on its way you're going to find a second cosmetic called nature's rhythm and yes this is another headband you actually find it after pulling down one of these trees and instead of going onto the main path which would be to jump onto the other branches instead just follow the tree and it should bring you to this hidden area right here where you should see a box simply open it up and it should give you that new headband and with that i believe we should be done with all of the headbands in this video but with that being said and done let's also talk about some other cool masks and helmets as well as armors you can find on Iki. and the next one is another secret import that we got from the legends mode and it's called the kitsune's mask you can actually also get this in the legends mode for the assassin but it's quite early on in the new Iki island expansion you acquire this from one of the unwritten tales near the yahata forest onto the east side of the Iki island by the way so once you reach this location you will find an abandoned house with a woman inside of it and you actually have to go through two dialogues to get that Kitsune's mask. Now, the second dialogue will only trigger if you finish the Tale of Eo main story in the Legends mode, which is the multiplayer free mode that you can play in Ghost of Tsushima. So what I suggest if you didn't do this already is to just play it on easy. And if you already did it and did not trigger that second dialogue, just repeat the nine and the final Tale of Eo right there in the Legends mode. If you have done that, you're gonna be able to trigger the second dialogue to the same NPC, which is going to let Jin explain the tale of Eo to this woman right here. And at the end of it, she's going to thank you and she will reward you the Kitsune's mask that looks something like this. Again, this is the same one that the assassin uses in the Legends mode and I really enjoy it. I think it goes really well with the ghost armor since you also kind of act as an assassin. And this, ladies and gents, brings us to the final helmet on today's list. Also something that I haven't seen too many people covering. It's called the Helmet of the Lower World and it's actually right under your nose. You acquired this from the ship docked in Funes Refuge but only after finishing a certain part of the Iki storyline that involves capturing a certain Mongol ship so it's going to be a little bit later in the main story campaign. Now the ship is going to be docked right behind the sparring ring right here. All you have to do is to just make your way to the back of the ship and here you will see a hatch. If you use it you're going to go underneath the deck and here is where you will find a chest inside of which you will finally get the helmet of the lower world now initially i did not know what type of armor set even uses this because it comes with a distinct color scheme which is that purple color on it well this actually combines really well with a bunch of new recolors for the mongol skins that you can only get from back with the voiceless in a new game plus mode so you actually have to start a new game plus mode to even see these and these are called by the way mongol sprite and eagle sprite they both cost about 20 ghost flowers but that should be easy to acquire and they fit perfectly with that helmet of the lower world specifically that eagle's wing uh, yeah just seems to fit perfectly because they kind of emulate that new shaman look that you find in the Iki island and they really enjoy this one not gonna lie i think that this is one of my favorite recolors for the mongol skins right now it also slightly works with the other one the mongol pride this one is a little bit more pink ish kind of has a few pink recolors over there but still uses some purple as well so it could fit with that too i think that this one would look even better but just because it looks better from the back like one of these cloth pieces definitely fits a little bit you know nicer with the overall helmet all in all these are the two armor skins by the way now there is another one that we haven't talked about in this video and this is called tribal's tower but this is something that you really cannot miss you actually get it from one of the main stories on Iki called the lightning in the storm so you cannot miss this but this one fits perfectly with the default skin for the mongol armor so it will look something like this again these are most of the helmets and most of the new cosmetics we also covered a lot more in the previous video 
videos but there's quite a lot more that are still left for some of the other like npcs and merchants in the game but obviously you can find them for yourselves this is it though thanks so much for watching now totally let me know down below which one of these is your favorite and i'll see you guys in the next one